Good evening. And for those of you who are joining us from a different time zone, good afternoon, good morning, namaskar. Thank you for tuning in to this exclusive and virtual presentation of the Infosys Prize 2020. My name is Deepak Padiki and I'm delighted to be your host again, broadcasting live from this lovely campus of Infosys in Bangalore. What a year it has been. A true test to the notion of human endeavor across all disciplines. In the life sciences, just a few hours ago, we made a major leap in the race for a vaccine. In the physical sciences and in engineering, there's a rush to make us all more productive. In mathematics, new models have to be thought of to make sense of the staggering data that we are generating. In the social sciences, new questions are being asked about how we function as a society. And in humanities, I really hope that we can capture the lessons from this period of human history for the benefit of the generations to come. But amidst all of this isolation, this self-imposed isolation, the essence of what we are celebrating here today, that tapestry of brilliant research and innovation, is what is keeping us all connected. And to set that context, let us watch a short video. Do we live in isolation and just barely survive? Or are we all interconnected in ways that let us all thrive? In the vast web of life, we are multiple strands. The more we seek answers, the wider our search expands. How does the salt of the sea also flow through our blood? What makes us perfect biomes for the organisms in our gut? Squirrels with their antics plant millions of trees each year. Their forgetfulness and mischief thus cleans the air. Ants and termites cultivate fungus. Is it similar to how farmers plant crops for us? If iron is formed through supernovae destruction, does our body contain the remains of a starry explosion? On the surface, there seems to be nothing in common. And yet, grains of sand from the Sahara nourish the Amazon. Do beavers help conservation and impact our existence? Do their waterways prevent floods and provide climate change resistance? We cannot attribute all this to mere chance. There is proof we spin to the same cosmic dance. Our world is beautifully intertwined. Look closely to see how it's perfectly aligned. The Infosys Prize applauds those who study this tapestry and honors their affirmations that we are part of one rhapsody. Today, we celebrate excellence in research and science. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Infosys Prize. Well, I hope you've made yourself comfortable at home, refreshed and ready for the wonder, the excitement and the applause that we have in store for you. So let's go. He has been the driving force behind the vision of the foundation and the coveted Infosys Prize. I've had the opportunity to work closely with him and watch him as he brings dreams to reality. Please welcome for the opening address, the founder of Infosys and the president of the Infosys Science Foundation, Mr. N.R. Naranamurthy. Good evening, Mr. Murthy, and uh, welcome. If you could just unmute yourself, you're live now. Did you ask me to speak? Yes, please, sir. Welcome to the program. You're live now. Okay. Professor Srinivasavaradhan, winners of the Infosys Prize 2020, trustees of the Infosys Science Foundation, jury chairs and jury members, 
members of the board of infosys shri salil parik ceo of infosys shrimati sudha murthy chairperson of infosys foundation infosions staff of infosys science foundation and guests it is a great pleasure to welcome you to this virtual function the trustees of infosys science foundation dream of an india where the poorest child in the remotest village in india has reasonable access to nutrition education health care and shelter and has confidence in a better future for itself and its progeny for this to become a reality there are two requirements the first is a set of sound and impactful ideas based on leading edge advances in the sciences mathematics engineering and humanities the second is measurable speedy high productivity and high quality execution of these ideas in an environment of honesty transparency accountability and constructive opposition good ideas are the result of a high quality education system and a leading edge research system such ideas also require a mindset of learning to learn critical and independent thinking and proactive problem solving it requires teachers that will not focus on the problems of teachers past but on those of the students future it is these qualities that the winners of the infosys prize embody it is in the pursuit of this dream that the leaders of infosys sought to add value to the needs of higher education at one level and solve the ground level problems of the poorest of the poor at another as part of the first institute a initiative infosys instituted in 1996 24 scholarships for phd students in computer science in indian institutions worth rupees 25000 per month that the current value of that is about 100000 rupees per month the second initiative was to institute the infosys prize to honor the best researchers in six categories and to create role models for our young researchers in india our jury members have done an excellent job of selecting aspirational role models for our society several of these winners have gone on to win prestigious awards on the global research scene they have enhanced the attraction of research as a career path for indian students we are grateful to infosys and the infosys foundation thanks to their munificence we have been making steady progress in various programs including our national lecture series in this lecture series infosys prize winners talk to university students about the exciting possibilities that a research career offers in india we will be moving to our own state of the art office in jayanagar bangalore and we invite you to visit us there next year i would now like to invite to welcome professor shrinivas varadhan our chief guest professor varadhan has been associated with infosys prize since its inception and has successfully led a very productive jury in mathematics statistics and theoretical computer science he and his panel have chosen brilliant academicians as winners of the prize beginning with professor ashok sen in 
who went on to win the fundamental physics prize in 2012 professor manjul bhargo in 2012 who went on to win the fields medal in 2014 and professor akshay venkatesh in 2016 who went on to win the fields medal in 2018 we are very grateful to professor varadhan and his jury for his seminal contribution after a brilliant phd in mathematics and statistics from the indian statistical institute in 1963 professor shrinivas varadhan joined the kurant institute of mathematical sciences of new york university and has had a stellar research career on the global mathematical scene he has been the recipient of several honors and awards he has been a member of the us national academy of sciences a fellow of the royal society in the uk a fellow of the norwegian academy of sciences and letters and a fellow of the indian academy of sciences among many honors that have been bestowed on him in 2007 he was awarded the prestigious abel prize considered to be the nobel prize for mathematicians the indian government honored him with a padma bhushan in 2008 in 2010 he was awarded the national medal of science by president barack obama we are honored today that professor shrinivasa varadhan is the chief guest of this year's award ceremony we will play a short video honoring him after which i request him to address this gathering i don't think math is a science at all said calvin to hobbes one day i think it's a religion You add two numbers and they magically become a new number. It's a miracle. No one can see how that happens. You either believe it or you don't. Of course, that was the smart Alec Calvin trying to get out of studying math by declaring it a religion. For many of us like Calvin, math has been the bane of our school years. But then there are those few chosen ones with a higher aptitude and the serendipity of receiving guidance from an ideal teacher varadhan's high school teacher swaminath ayer transformed math class into pleasure and young raghu as he is known to his friends was hooked forever andrei kolmogorov who developed the probability theory read varadhan's phd thesis and was floored This is not the work of a student but of a mature master he exclaimed In 1963 Varadhan moved to USA New York was an exciting place for the aspiring probabilist and the Kurant Institute where he did most of his life's work provided him with a fertile intellectual environment Srinivasa Varadhan went on to win numerous awards and accolades including the impressive National Medal of Science from former president Barack Obama and the Padma Bhushan one of the highest accolades in India In 2007 he was awarded the highly prestigious Abel Prize for his remarkable contributions to the theory of large deviations. In his own words, this was a delightful moment in his life. Despite achieving the pinnacle of success in his chosen career, Varadhan hasn't changed much. He remains the same humble young boy at heart, the son of a science teacher from a small town near Madras with an endearing shy smile. He wears the cloak of success lightly and his intellectual brilliance with humility and restraint. The gauge of a truly great man.
I want to thank the trustees of the Infosys Science Foundation for inviting me to be their chief guest on this occasion. I thank Mr. Murthy for his kind introduction. I had a wonderful relationship with the foundation for over 10 years. They are doing a great service to the research community with their prizes in the humanities, social sciences, engineering, life sciences, physical sciences, and mathematics. It highlights the work done in India and abroad by persons of Indian origin. I commend them on their vision and commitment. The last 75 years has seen extraordinary changes in the way we live. Science and technology has transformed our lives. The rate of change has been accelerating. The areas of travel, communication, health, and entertainment as they are today bear no resemblance to what they were 75 years back. Most of the changes are the result of technological innovation made possible by progress in science. Society, to the agencies of their governments, has provided ample support for research. Private corporations have invested in research that would hopefully give rise to technological development they can profit from. The model has been, for the most part, governments support basic research and private corporations take it from there, develop it, and commercialize it. While many scientists work in academic institutions, their research is often supported by the government. There are others who are engaged full-time in government laboratories and projects of direct interest to their governments. The agenda of scientists and private corporations reflect the goal of the particular institution. At the academic institution, the research is supposed to be curiosity-driven, concentrated more on understanding the basic principles of their discipline without worrying about its immediate applicability. The underlying principle is all knowledge is good, although governments often prefer to support research there is potential to pay off quickly. The research carried out by scientists in these diverse environments has benefited society over the years. In the field of health, modern medicine can prevent life-threatening diseases and provide a remedy for most. In agriculture, science has provided a way to feed an ever-growing population of the world. Changes in communication technology is nothing short of a miracle. On the, on the lines, online conferences are common where hundreds can get together virtually on Zoom or similar platform. Computer science has made it possible with artificial intelligence and machine learning to automate many aspects of our lives. As the research efforts of most of our scientists impact our daily lives, this places on their shoulders a responsibility. Foremost is the ethical responsibility. In experimental disciplines, one can be tempted to see what one wants to see rather than what there is to see, especially in pharmaceutical industry, where delayed after effects on drugs can be devastating. Particularly now with the COVID-19, many companies are trying to get out a vaccine. While the urgency is obvious, Adequate testing takes time and cannot be rushed. Data science is another area where the bias of the investigator can influence unconsciously the construction of the algorithm, or even, the, even if the investigator has no bias, the algorithm itself can introduce a bias. With machine learning, one may have difficulty uncovering it. Some of the research can pose a moral dilemma for the scientist. A prime example going back nearly 75 years is the Manhattan Project. The US government put together a team of eminent scientists to quickly produce an atomic device that can be used to gain advantage in the war against Japan. It was headed by the eminent physicist Robert Oppenheimer. The US assembled the bombs and used them to force Japan to surrender. Afterwards, Oppenheimer turned against developing more advanced nuclear devices, which resulted 
and the government take the punitive action against him. He was finally rehabilitated 10 years later. Biological science today has advanced to a point where we understand the human body and how it functions at a much deeper level. Cloning is not possible. Few sheep were cloned some years back, and there is some unsubstantiated claim that human cloning was carried out. The idea of a mass produced army of cloned soldiers on the march is not very appealing. To the scientists working on such a project have a response, moral responsibility for the effects of their research. We know how the capability to alter the genetic makeup of the embryo, implanted and let it mature. All this has therapeutic advantages, ability to generate body parts for transplants that will not be rejected. Do we want to encourage parents to have a child made to order with Einstein's intelligence, athletic ability of Shakti Munir, the looks of their woman, and the voice of Mama Rafi? Great progress is being made in communications. We jump several Gs in a short time. We can manage to do all of our business online, save time, avoid trips to the bank, watch a movie without going to the theater, carry out conversation with friends and family, face to face, so to speak, across several time zones. But in the process, we have lost our privacy. Our identities are being stolen. Our digital space is being invaded constantly. Our public systems like hospitals and power systems are being held for ransom. Hostile forces use social media to spread false rumors and endanger the peace, safety, and the domestic norm, democratic norms of our society. AI and artificial intelligence started out as an inspiration. It's now a reality. They're increasing their control of our lives steadily. They can try the plane you are on, drive you a call while you catch a few things, and generally run your life. They can control your mind and make you do things. A chip in your brain can now allow you to use your artificial limb by just thinking about it. It is a great boon for the physically challenged, but will it stop there? Our advanced societies require vast quantities of energy obtained by burning coal, oil, natural gas, and other carbon products that have a negative impact on our climate as well as the quality of air we breathe. The current situation of global warming is an example of the science is often involved. Process in science is a great thing. Scientists work hard to achieve it and often with significant sacrifice in other aspects of their life. They should be appreciated and commended for it. But like everything in life, there are unintended consequences, and scientists should be aware of it and do what they can to minimize the risk. But the primary responsibility rests collectively with societies, their governments, and international organizations to regulate and control the harmful side effects. While it is tempting to use the latest scientific discovery to gain advantage over the adversary, it is only temporary on the other side will have it soon. No one can predict where science will take us during the next 50 years. It will surely be an exciting journey. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Vardhan. It was so lovely to hear your wise words again. And uh, in your own simple, unique style, you touched upon that most complex of dilemmas that face researchers and organizations that support research today. And of course, we are always grateful to you for your active encouragement and advocacy of our cause. Thank you again. Well, it's time now to announce the winners of the Infosys Prize 2020. The Infosys Prize consists of a gold medal, a citation, and a purse of 100,000 US dollars in each category. The winners are chosen from a list of nominations chosen by an eminent jury that consists of renowned researchers from around the world. Our first category today is in engineering and computer science.
And to set the stage for this award, it is my pleasure to call the anchor trustee for this category, a former director of Infosys and a co-founder of Axelor Ventures, Mr. Srinath Bhatni. Good evening, Mr. Bhatni. Thank you for joining us, and I hand it off to you. Thank you, Deepak. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, all of you. As we leave behind the challenging times of 2020 and moving towards, move towards the new hope and horizon, where science and technology is certainly going to play much more key role in the future, I welcome all of you to this wonderful event of Infosys Science Prize event of 2020. Our jury chairs from six categories have chosen remarkable winners and I am privileged to introduce you to the chair of the panel of the Infosys Prize in Engineering and Computer Science, Professor Arvind. Professor Arvind is a Johnson Professor of Computer Science and Engineering and the head of the Computer Science Faculty at MIT, which he joined in 1978. After graduating with B.Tech in Electrical Engineering from the Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur, Professor Arvind went on to earn his MS and PhD in Computer Science from the University of Minnesota. In 2000, he founded Sandburst, a fabulous semiconductor company. And in 2003, he co-founded Blue Spec Incorporated, a company. Professor Arvind was elected to the US National Academy of Engineering in 2008 and has received numerous awards and honors, including IEEE Charles Babbage Outstanding Scientist Award in 1994 and the IEEE Computer Society Harry H. Good Memorial Award in 2012. I now request Professor Arvind to announce the Infosys Prize winner in engineering and computer science. Over to you, Professor Arvind. Professor Arvind, I think you're on mute. If you could unmute yourself and announce the prize again, please. Thank you. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm pleased to announce that the winner of the Infosys Prize in Engineering and Computer Science this year is Professor Hari Balakrishnan from MIT. Our jury, our jury panel comprised of Professor Sudhir Jain, Director IIT Gandhinagar, Professor Jitendra Malik from University of California at Berkeley, Professor Jayati Murthy, Dean of Engineering uh, at UCLA, Pro Dr. Dhananjaya uh, Dendikuri, founder of uh, Achira Labs, and Professor Kaushik Bhattacharya, Vice Provost at Caltech. We chose Hari for his broad contributions to computer networking his seminal work on mobile and wireless systems, and for commercial use of mobile telematics to improve driver behavior and make roads safer around the world. Hari has repeatedly blazed the trail in mobile and wireless system for others to follow. TCP is the communication protocol on which internet is built, 
TCP was developed for wired networks, and it was a big technical challenge to adopt, adapt it, uh, this protocol for high-speed wireless communication. Hari was the first to improve the performance of TCP on wireless networks and develop novel mechanisms to handle mobility seamlessly. Hari's dissertation at Berkeley won the ACM Doctoral Dissertation Award for this work in 1998. Another contribution of Hari, you all rely on uh, GPS for outdoor navigation. But in 2004, Hari developed Cricket, a first accurate indoor location system. Hari has made numerous contributions and I can go into them much more deeply, but I will just focus on one, which is my favorite project called Cartel System. Cartel enabled participatory, participatory sensing applications creating a field of mobile sensing. The idea is to use sensors in your mobile assets, like your car, your smartphone, um, and process the collected data in this manner for a variety of real-time applications. Two noteworthy results from cartel projects include pothole petrol, uh, which uses sensor-equipped vehicles to detect the surface conditions of roads, and algorithms to accurately determine path and delay from noisy position data of the vehicles. Believe me, this is extremely useful in Boston, which is full of roads with potholes every spring. The cartel project led to the founding of Cambridge Mobile Telematics CMT by Hari and uh, his colleague, Professor Sam Madden in 2010. Today, CMT is the world's largest mobile telematic provider, supporting many leading insurance and ride share companies in 25 countries, helping to reduce the millions of road crashes that occur annually. My wife uses Hari's technology in her smartphone to convince me that she's a better driver than me. As they say, Hari is the whole package. On one hand, his research is already taught to undergraduates in computer science, and his uh, sensor network alone has been cited over 16,000 times, according to Google Scholar. On the other hand, Hari is a successful entrepreneur who is making the world a better place. He makes us all and India proud. Congratulations, Hari. Please say a few words. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? Great. Thank you, Professor Arvind and the eminent jury. I'm truly grateful to receive this prestigious honor and many congratulations to my fellow honorees as well. Much of my research happens because a cool idea comes to mind and one wants to keep thinking about it. I think much long-term research is like that, done for its own sake, wanting to see how or understand why. So of what use is it? The answer is that all societal progress comes only from the foundations laid by long-term research. For example, our ability to have this online event in the face of the tragic pandemic, the efforts to get the vaccine to reality so quickly, contact tracing and many other such things. And I thank the Infosys Science Foundation for recognizing and celebrating research with this prize and their many other efforts. My research and teaching at MIT have been done with my amazing students, postdocs and collaborators and at my company with superb colleagues. This prize honors them as much as it does me. My family, especially my children, bring me as joy. My parents, both physicists, my sister, also an engineering professor, and my grandmother and great-grandmother gave me a loving home where I could repeatedly ask my favorite question, why, without ever telling me to shut it. I'm sure I must have been a pain to deal with. I thank them for that, for why and how are the fundamental questions of research. Thank you for listening to this. Congratulations, Professor Balakrishnan. Thank you. Congratulations, Hari. Very well done. Well Thank you. Thank you. Well, congratulations, Professor Balakrishnan. I just love that, the why and the how, but your moment is now. Thank you for bringing some very innovative research to everyday problems like potholes and car crashes. All right, let's move on to our second category for today, which is the humanities.
And to introduce the jury chair for humanities, it is my pleasure to welcome the anchor trustee for this category, the co-founder and chairman of Infosys, Mr. Nandan Nilakini. Good evening, Nandan. Welcome to the show, and I'll hand the floor to you. Thank you, Deepak. And I'm delighted to announce the chair of the jury on humanities, Professor Akhil Bilgrami. Prof Professor Bilgrami is a philosopher of mind and language, and he's the Sydney Morgan Besser Professor of Philosophy at Columbia University. He was educated at Elphinstone College, Mumbai, and a Rhodes Scholar at Oxford, where he did his PPE and then did his PhD from the University of Chicago. He has written many seminal books on philosophy, and he is here today as the chair of the jury. I request Professor Akhil Bilgrami to announce the Infosys Prize winner in the category of humanities. Over to you, Professor. I'm very pleased to say that the Infosys Prize 2020 in Humanities is awarded to Dr. Prachi Deshpande, Professor of History at the Center for Social Sciences in Kolkata. It was a real pleasure for us jurors, Professor Janet Gyatso of Harvard University, Professor Claire Harris of Oxford University, Professor Christopher Shackle of London University, Professor David Schulman of Hebrew University, and Professor Sanjay Subramaniam of University of California in Los Angeles and myself to read and to honor the work of Dr. Prachi Deshpande this year for the Infosys Prize in the Humanities. Deshpande is an historian of great scholarly depth as well as of great theoretical sophistication. Her remarkable book, Creative Pasts, probes brilliantly into the foundations of the modern historical imagination in the Marathi-speaking region of Western India, with wide implications that go well beyond that regional focus. By a careful analytic survey of a wide variety of social factors, including the caste and other sectarian conflicts over two and a half centuries, she constructs an entire social context within which the practices of history writing emerged in the modern period. Her work imaginatively uncovers the extent to which the literary forms may be the source of historical veridicality, and at the same time, how documentary forms such as family chronicles can be laced with the rhetoric of literary persuasion. One would not have thought that there's anything new to say about the well mind subject of the relation between history and memory, but Professor Deshpande manages to bring freshly illuminating insight into the subject by demonstrating the ways in which the proximate collective memory of the Maratha Empire constructed a masculinist image of the nationalist ideal. At the same time, she skillfully depicts how a society's conflicts of caste and class could have been claimed to be overcome in the construction of the identity of a common moral sense of community, a Maharashtra dharma, by a scrutiny of, among other things, the social and devotional practices and principles of the Vargari sects. Professor Deshpande has now just completed another extended historical work, this time on the compositional practices of a community of professional scribes over two centuries, who were in a wide and various field of employment and is thereby unfolding nothing less than a social history of the Modi script. The book is to be published soon and will undoubtedly leave as deep a mark as creative pasts. I cannot close these very brief remarks on the tremendous scholarly achievements of Prachi Deshpande without expressing my own more personal admiration of her character displayed in something that foreign domiciled scholars like myself should particularly acknowledge and applaud. And that is a decision to give up all the privileges and the metropolitan centrality of a post in one of the most prestigious universities of the West, the University of California at Berkeley, to return to India 
and to participate in its educational and research institutions. Without a doubt, her presence will bring, as already brought, a renewed excitement to and heighten the level of our country's intellectual and public life. Congratulations, Prat. Thank you, Professor Bilgrami, um, for that very generous uh, introduction to my work. Uh, I'm deeply honored to receive this prestigious prize. I thank the Infosys Science Foundation and the distinguished members of the jury for this recognition of my scholarship. I also take this opportunity to acknowledge the role of all the teachers, colleagues, friends, and family who have sustained and enriched my work over the years. I also thank the jury members for taking note of my writing in English and in Marathi. It inspires me to deepen my modest efforts towards a bilingual scholarship that spurs productive dialogues between academic debates in English and those in Indian languages. I hope that such a recognition will also inspire others to explore and also substantially support critical and creative scholarship on and in Indian languages across various disciplines. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations, Prachi. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. You know, I, I must admit that uh, when I was in school, history was a problem for me because the teachers always seemed to bring up the past. But then, you know, as Oscar Wilde said, anyone can make history, but it takes a special person to write it. So congratulations, Dr. Deshpande, for your efforts in making history more relevant and more interesting for all of us. Let's move on to our next category, which is the life sciences. And to introduce the jury chair for this category, I invite the anchor trustee for this category, uh, co-founder of Infosys and co-founder of Axelor Ventures, Mr. S.D. Shibulal. Great to have you with us, Shibu. You're live. Please go ahead. Thank you, Deepak. Good evening, everyone. It's my privilege to introduce you to the jury chair of the Infosys Prize in Life Sciences, Professor Mrigan Sor. He's the Newton Professor of Neurosciences, the director of the Simons Center for the Social Brain, and an investigator at the Picor Institute for Learning and Memory at MIT. He received the Sherman Fairchild Chair in 1998, and the Newton Chair at MIT in 2008. He is a Fellow of the Royal Society of UK. He is an alumnus of the IIT Kanpur and Vanderbilt University in Nashville. Let me now request Professor Sur to announce the Infosys Prize winner in Life Sciences. Uh, thank you, Shibu. <clears throat> I'm, I'm pleased to announce the winner of the Infosys Prize in Life Sciences this year, Dr. Rajan Shankar Narayanan from the Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, Hyderabad. The Emphasis Prize in Life Sciences is awarded 
to Dr. Rajan Sankar Narayanan for fundamental contributions towards understanding one of the most basic mechanisms in biology, the error-free translation of the genetic code to make protein molecules is of utmost importance to life. Dr. Shankar Narayanan has made seminal contributions towards understanding a critical checkpoint in the production of proteins from messenger RNA. His work has potential applications to the design of drugs such as antibiotics and immunosuppressants. The Life Sciences Jury Panel, consisting of Mary Beckerley, Caroline Dean, Vishwa Dixit, Gagandeep Kang, and John Kurian, all eminent life scientists from all over the world, unanimously selected Dr. Shankar Narayanan because his work has addressed a fundamental question in how proteins are made. Proteins are basic building blocks of life that carry out a large number of functions in every cell of the body. That's trillions and trillions of cells. Proteins consist of linear polymers or polypeptide chains built up from up to 20 amino acids, which are all of the L or the left-handed form and not of the D or the right-handed form. Many things in nature exist in mirror symmetric form, including our bodies and our hands. We have a left hand and a right hand. The Latin for right hand is dexter, hence D. Having proteins be made of only left-handed or L amino acids, excluding right-handed or D amino acids, is key to proper cellular and organismal function. Incorporating D amino acids into polypeptide chains has enormously deleterious effects, and their exclusion is not left to chance. Components of the translational machinery that converts RNA to protein function in concert to exclude D amino acids from this translation process. Dr. Sankar Narayan has examined the mechanism by which nature selects L or left-handed and not D or right-handed amino acids. That is amino acids of the proper chirality or mirror image symmetry to make proteins. By analyzing the atomic level structures of the enzymes responsible for maintaining the proper chirality or symmetry, he has established how they work. The structural portraits of the amino acid and its binding that he has generated speak a thousand words and they reveal at a glance selection mechanisms that are conserved across life from the simplest organisms to humans. Dr. Shankar Narayan's work on this fundamental problem in molecular recognition has potential applications in drug design through protein engineering by enabling the design of chemical keys to open the locks on chiral fidelity discovered by him. So on behalf of the jury, my warmest congratulations on this award, Shankar. I invite you to say a few words. Thank you, Professor. A very good evening to all of you. I am indeed delighted to receive this prize, and I thank the Infosys Science Foundation and the jury members headed by Professor Sur for this kind recognition. Nearly 15 years ago, when I proposed working on this very fundamental problem, to many, it was a non-existent problem in biology. But a very few kept faith in me, especially my lab members and students. I thank the whole team, both past and present, for all the hard work that they have done and continue to do. Thank you, guys. I also thank my host institution, CCMB, and the parent organization, CSIR, for all the support they have given me from day one. At this very juncture, I would like to remember my teachers, 
particularly Professor Vijayan from the Indian Institute of Science and Professor Dinamoras from Strasbourg. It's very important to have a role for mentors and they shape how we do science. They have imparted through their style of functioning how to build effective teams and to keep the focus on the well-being of individuals working for you without compromising on the quality of science. Thank you, sirs. Words are not enough to express gratitude to one's family, especially my parents, both of them are not with us. My wife, Nitya, who has been a source of strength to me all through. My children, Sandhya and Aravind, to whom I turn to for rejuvenation during desperate times. Finally, I would like to dedicate this award to the memory of our former director, late Dr. Lalji Singh, who not just recruited me at CCMB, but ensured that I take off in the best possible way by supporting me extraordinarily. Thank you all for being with us tonight. Thank you. Congratulations, Shankar. Yes, congratulations, Shankar, once again. Wonderful work, inspiring work. Well, congratulations, Professor Shankar, and uh, thank you for being so persistent with your inquiry. Decoding those enzymes so we can all know a little bit more about how proteins are made and transmitted. Well, from the biological, we move to the logical. I'm talking of our next category, mathematical sciences. And it is my pleasure now to introduce the anchor trustee for this category, co-founder of Infosys, Mr. K. Dinesh. Good evening, Mr. Dinesh. Welcome to the program, and the floor is yours. Thanks, Deepak. And uh, good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to everyone, based on where they are all across the globe. It's my pleasure here to announce the Infosys Prize in Mathematics, the man who brings that. And the jury chair for that I have to I'll introduce now. Professor Chandrasekhar Khare is the jury chair for Mathematical Sciences. He is the David Saxon Presidential Term Chair in Mathematics at the University of California, Los Angeles. He is a renowned number theorist, and his work with Joffer Wintenberger gave a proof of a celebrated conjecture of J.P. Serre in number theory. The conjecture had remained unsolved for more than three decades after it was first formulated until these two gentlemen solved it. Professor Kare has many accomplishments and a few of them are, he has received a number of honors and awards, including the Fermat Prize in 2007, the Infosys Prize in 2010, our own Infosys Prize, Humboldt Research Award, and the Cole Prize in 2011. He was invited speaker at the International Congress of Mathematicians in 2010, and was elected a fellow of the Royal Society in 2012. It's my request Professor Kare to announce the Infosys Prize, prize winner in Mathematical Sciences for 2020. Oh, Professor Kare. Thank you, Mr. Dinesh. I'm delighted to announce the winner of the Infosys Prize this year in Mathematical Sciences, Professor Saurav Chatterjee from Stanford. So 
The jury for this category consisted of uh, Professor Parimala from Emory, Professor Shafi Goldwasser from MIT, Professor Raghunathan from TIFR, Professor Varadhan from uh, Kurant Institute, and Professor Akshay Venkatesh from the Institute of Advanced Study in Princeton. So Saurav completed his undergrad studies at Indian Statistical Institute in Calcutta, and then went on to do a PhD at Stanford, where he's now a professor after stints at the Courant Institute and UC Berkeley. So like me, he's in California, where it is very early in the morning. So Professor Saurav Chatterjee was recognized by the jury for his deep and wide ranging work in the fields of probability, statistics, and math mathematical physics. He's considered to be one of the most versatile probabilists of his generation. Saurav is the first probabilist to win the Infosys Prize uh, in mathematics, now in its 12th edition. And it is indeed a very happy coincidence that uh, our chief guest today, Professor Varadhan, is one of the foremost probabilists of our time. So now let me say a few uh, words in non-technical terms about the area Saurav works in. Probability is a relatively young area of mathematics only a few hundred years old, unlike some other areas of mathematics, which are thousands of years old. One of its origins is in the correspondence between two great French mathematicians, uh, Pierre Fermat and Blaise Pascal in the 17th century, in which they came up with methods to divide the stakes fairly in an interrupted game of chance. Since then, it has grown into a powerful area which straddles pure and applied math. We unconsciously make probabilistic calculations all the time. For example, when stepping out of our house on a cloudy day, our decision to take an umbrella with us or not depends on our sense of the likelihood of it raining based on weather reports and our own intuition and previous experience. Probability enters whenever there's uncertainty about an outcome, like when we toss a coin, or when we have to make decisions based on a very complex set of circumstances or on the basis of information which is incomplete, which is to say almost all the time in real life. Saurav has done very important work in sampling and recovering data given sparse, noisy information. He has also done important work on networks and connectivity. This is important in modern communication theory and in many modern applications of probability. In our everyday lives, we often have to estimate connectivity of network we are interested in. This is reflected in the common quip that any two people in the world are only six degrees of separation apart. So if you want to find a connection between us and someone else, we just have to find a friend of a friend or an uncle of a friend. And in a surprisingly small number of steps, we get connected. Saurav's work in this field has had significant impact. Congratulations, Saurav, on the prize. Uh, please say a few words. OK. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Professor Kare, um, for the very kind uh, introduction. and. Uh, uh, you know, of course, I, I thank the Infosys Foundation. Uh, it's, um, you know, the Infosys Prize is, is one of the best things to have happened uh, to Indian science in the, in the last 20 years. Uh, and I thank the Board of Trustees. And above all, you know, I thank the jury for, uh, for selecting me. You know, it's a very, very esteemed jury of uh, you know, great mathematicians. Uh, so I'm very honored and humbled to have, uh, to have received this prize. Um, now the prize uh, itself, you know, I, I I think you know everybody who made me deserves this, you know. So I, I have to thank all these people, you know. So it's it's not just it's just not just me, you know. It's, I'm just a product of so so that includes you know all my mentors and uh, and teachers, especially you know my advisor Percy Diaconis and Professor Varadhan, uh, and there are many many other teachers from uh, from ISI um, from Stanford and. Berkeley and uh, you know so they, they, they are all and I'm the product of all their uh, efforts um, and uh, and of course you know my family so uh, so my wife my best friend uh, you know my, my wife I, I would like to thank Esha and my son who is sleeping you know thankfully now he's not awake uh, so uh, it's very early in the morning here um, and my, my parents, you know, for, for raising me uh, to be who I am, you know, all the principles with which I grew up and, uh, you know, everything that, uh, that I am, you know, is, uh, they, they raised me. And so nothing can express that in words. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my grandfather, who had a great influence on me, uh, and also, you know, my in-laws who were here, uh, you know, uh, the, watching the ceremony. So I would like to, like to thank them. 
uh, for their support and uh, and kindness and all my friends you know so so that's uh, friends and colleagues and but you know there's one other entity that i would like to thank which is my country you know uh, so so india i grew up in and you know we are a poor country and i don't think there's any other country which is as poor as us so where you get as much opportunity to shine as an academic eventually you know there, there is really not no other country that that affords this opportunity uh, you know the institutions that we have the the world class uh, uh, training that we get you know it's just uh, amazing and i never realized that until going to the united states where i saw that you know it's really uh, fantastic and and it's uh, you know it's the the result of the policies uh, since independence that uh, that we have and uh, but also you know the thousands of years of civilization that we have so so thank thank you okay. congrats saurav and that was a great reply congrats saurav again Well, congratulations, uh, Professor Chatterjee. I'm sure this world can do with more predictability. It's uh, such a chaotic world, dare I say. Well then, one of the things that I'm missing in this virtual setup is the infectious applause from an audience. But I'm sure that each one of you in your own little way is applauding the work of our laureates today in your homes. But even as we are in a virtual world, research continues unabated in the next category, which is the physical sciences. Let me introduce you now to the anchor trustee for this category. He's a co-founder of Infosys and a co-founder at Axelor Ventures, Mr. S. Gopalakrishnan. Welcome to the program, Chris, and the floor is yours. Thank you, Deepak, and uh, good day to every one of you. Uh, it's my honor and privilege to introduce Professor Srinivas Kulkarni. Uh, Srinivas has been an anchor trustee from the beginning of Infosys Science Foundation Infosys Prize uh, from 2009. He's a George Eldry Hale Professor of Astronomy and Planetary Sciences at Caltech. His primary interests are in the study of cosmic explosions, neutron stars, and developing new methodologies for astronomical research. He is known for the discovery of the first millisecond pulsar, first brown dwarf, and showing that gamma ray, gamma ray bursts are of extra -gal galactic origin. He's won numerous prizes, awards, recognitions. I won't go into them. But uh, uh, you know, he, he also has uh, uh, mentored and uh, uh, has had numerous students for research under him. So over to you, Professor Srinivas. The winner of the 2020 Infosys Science Award in Physical Sciences is Professor Arindam Ghosh, Department of Physics, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, India. The jury panel consisted of Professor Tejinder Virde, Imperial College London, United Kingdom, Professor Subhi Sachdev, Harvard University, USA, Professor Ajay Sood, Indian Institute of Technology, uh, sorry, Indian Institute of Science, <coughs> India, Professor Rana Adhikari, California Institute of Technology, USA, Professor Milan Purohit, Dean, Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology, Japan. The citation reads as follows. The Infosys Prize 
2020 in physical sciences is awarded to Arindam Ghosh for his development of atomically thin two-dimensional semiconductors to build a new generation of functional electronic, thermoelectric, and optoelectric devices. He has probed new quantum phenomena in graphene with conductivity noise and created a new platform for light matter interaction that impacts quantum technologies and sensing in a fundamental way. Um, I think I need to explain this in less technical terms. Uh, it's actually quite simple in some ways and the physics here is really beautiful. Uh, let's start with chemists. Chemists regu uh, regularly synthesize new materials. They take two different materials and then they react and you get a, a new material. However, the reaction rules by which the atoms interchange or the ions interchange, they're very strongly restricted by chemical laws. Okay, so you can't arbitrarily create a material because the pathways don't exist, at least in nature. In 1959, Richard Feynman gave a talk at Caltech titled, There's Plenty of Room at the Bottom an invitation to enter a new field of physics. In this talk, Feynman wondered the possibility of directly manipulating atoms as a next step in synthetic materials. One of the possibilities that Feynman raised was, what could we do with layered structures with just the right layers? In popular literature, Feynman's talk is considered as laying the foundation of nanophysics and nanotechnology, and that's the area in which our winner has worked. Now, specifically, there are three types of materials in electronics. <clears throat> materials which do not conduct electricity are called as insulators. Conductors, as implied by the name, are conduct electricity. And semiconductors are a bit in between, but most importantly, they can be electrically manipulated to be either an insulator or a conductor. It is that part of the electrical manipulation that makes semiconductors very powerful and they come, all, you use them all the time, whether you're aware of it or not. <clears throat> when you use your cell phone, when you do anything which is sort of modern electronics. Semiconductors have band gaps, unlike uh, insulators whose band gaps are very large or conductors which have no band gaps. And these band gaps make them suitable for converting light into electricity. For an example, is a photovoltaic cell that you may have seen on someone's rooftop or electricity into light, which you know, you've seen it many times, it's called an LED light. In ordinary life, materials that we're all familiar with are three dimensionals. However, if you can build a layer or a single atom layer, then the electrons in such a layer will have one degree of freedom less to move. Now there's a basic uh, principle of quantum mechanics. When you try to confine any particle or you restrict it, the quantum mechanical effects become larger. And we don't see that because the, the real world is very large on quantum scales. However, when you, confine, when you look at monoatom layers, the quantum mechanical effects actually can become quite prominent. As a result, these layers will have unusual properties compared to ordinary three-dimensional material. Graphene is a name given to a single layer of carbon, and we now know how to make graphene in large, in industrial ways. Graphene is an excellent conductor. In fact, there are plans to use graphene ribbons to carry large currents with very little loss, much better than copper wire. By adding a layer of semiconductor on top of the graphene layer, a whole range of possibilities open up, and that's what our winner has worked on. Professor Ghosh, working with his students, has made advances in physics and applications of double layered material. He discovered a new physical mechanism to convert light into electricity using hybrid structures of graphene and molybdenum disulfide and in the process kick-started the new field 
of two-dimensional optoelectronics. These heterostructures can achieve conversion of light into electricity that is nearly 10 billion times more efficient than bulk semiconductors such as silicon. The ability to detect very small intensity of radiation has applications naturally in photography, low power communications, and optical sensing. Professor Ghosh's many recent works on this topic cover new materials and extension to infrared, as well as a goal to achieve detection of a single photon. I don't have the time to go into the fundamental implications of his work for basic physics. However, as an astronomer, I'm particularly excited about the possibility of single photon infrared detectors. Large arrays of such detectors, if built at low cost, would open up wide field imaging of the sky at infrared wavelengths, which in my opinion would be a frontier area. And if it was all over young, all over, young all over again, that's what I'd be doing. Uh, I'd like to conclude by saying the ambit of physical sciences, I would say is extremely large. We, we go from geology through physics, chemistry to space sciences and astronomy. Traditionally, Indian science has been defined and dominated by amazing theorists. That's a matter of joy and celebration. However, science is bigger than that. Um, so the jury panel is always delighted when we can recognize truly outstanding experimentalists who can stand on par with theoretical achievements. Congratulations, Professor Ghosh. Thank you, Professor Kulkarni. Uh, you explained my work much better than I could. Um, I, will, I thank uh, the Infosys uh, Science uh, Foundation and the members of the jury uh, for recognizing our work. I am delighted and deeply humbled. Uh, I wish to take this opportunity uh, to thank my colleagues at the Indian Institute of Science, especially those at the Department of Physics, which I belong to, and the Center for Nanoscience and Engineering. Uh, my research, as Professor Kulkarni explained wonderfully, is on physics that deals with nanometer size objects. And these require very heavy uh, in experimental infrastructure, which cannot be created or even maintained by individual researchers. And this is one of the biggest difficulty in doing such kind of work mm -hmm. in India. And it is only through the tireless efforts of my colleagues at IISC that we could carry out such experiments successfully over the last few years. Um, you know, during the last 15 years I've been here, I have been fortunate to work with some of the most brilliant and motivated students and postdocs. Uh, I always tell my students um, to work hard uh, so that I can reap the benefits. And there could be no bigger example than this today. Thank you guys. Um, this is a result of your hard work. Um, finally, I would uh, like to thank my family for its unflinching support in putting up with me. My mother, my brother, my sister-in-law, and also Anna and our Tishwan. I congratulate my fellow laureates. Thank you and stay safe. Congratulations, uh, Professor Aravind Ghosh. Uh, of course, um, it's uh, doubly uh, nice because you're from Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Very well deserved. Thank you. Congratulations, uh, Professor Ghosh. Two dimensional materials, I mean, who could imagine? The physical world is definitely getting smaller and flatter. But flatter economic opportunities is what our next winner is researching in our final category for today, which is the social sciences. And now I'm very pleased to introduce the anchor trustee for this category. Is a former director at Infosys and the chairman of the Manipal Global Education Services, Mr. Mohandas Pai. Welcome to the program, Mr. Pai. I'll hand the floor to you. Uh, thank you, Deepak. Folks from all around the world who are joining us today to celebrate honoring our laureates. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. To tell you more about a winner's work and to announce the award for social sciences, 
It is my privilege to introduce Professor Kaushik Basu, Professor of Economics and the C. E. Marx Professor of International Studies, Cornell University. He is the former Chief Economist of the World Bank and was Chief Economic Advisor to the Government of India. He was awarded the Padma Bhushan in 2008. In 2017, he became President of the International Economic Association. Our association with Professor Kaushik Basu as chair of the jury goes back a long way. I request Professor Basu to announce the Infosys Prize winner in social sciences. I am pleased to announce that the winner of the 2020 Infosys Prize in the Social Sciences this year is for economics, is Professor Raj Chetty of Harvard University. This year, we had a distinguished jury consisting of Harun Bhorat, Professor, University of Cape Town, Ashwini Deshpande, Professor, Ashoka University, Avinash Dixit, Professor, Princeton University, Eliana La Ferreira, Professor, Bocconi University in Milan, and Jorgen Weibull, Professor, Stockholm School of Economics. The prize to Professor Chetty is a recognition of his pioneering research studying barriers to economic opportunity and developing solutions to help people escape from poverty. He has a magical ability to discern patterns in large data. He has used this in conjunction with economic theory to draw implications for inequality education, intergenerational mobility, and taxation. Chetty's work on big data is particularly important at a time when data has become contentious because it is often used for nefarious purposes. His work demonstrates how to use big data responsibly, showing its tremendous power as an instrument for increasing human welfare while respecting privacy. His work is focused mainly on the United States, but has huge potential for emerging economies, including India. The value of his big data-based analysis has become more apparent in the COVID-19 pandemic. Professor Raj Chetty, along with some collaborators, set up Opportunity Insights, a not-for-profit organization at Harvard, which has developed an atlas based on anonymous data following 20 million Americans. The atlas offers answers to questions such as, which neighborhoods in America are likely to provide the best chance to climb out of poverty? And of course, conversely, which neighborhoods are most likely to keep you trapped in poverty. In addition, Opportunity Insights has now set up a COVID tracker, which using millions of data points enables us to study the shape and trajectory of fault lines in the United States. Something similar should be possible to do in India. Raj Chetty is one of the youngest tenured professors in the history of Harvard. Born in India, he moved to USA while still in elementary school with his immigrant parents. His father is an economist who used to be at the Indian Statistical Institute, and his mother is a medical doctor. Raj completed his PhD at the age of 23 from Harvard taught at Berkeley and Stanford, and then returned to Harvard as professor. Raj Chetty's immense scholarship has been widely recognized through various awards, such as the MacArthur Genius Fellowship. 
To close on a personal note, I met Raj once as a child. I knew his father, V.K. Chetty, distinguished mathematical economist when they lived in India. And I had met Raj when he was, I think, I've been doing some calculation, around five years old. I next met him when he was professor at Stanford. And I had invited him to give a public lecture at the World Bank in Washington. I remember I was, as was the entire audience, mesmerized by his insights from the study he had done using mega data from United States on the lifelong effects of having good teachers in school. So having a good teacher in school, what will it do to you for the next 20, 25 years? It's a study of that and a magnificent study of the power of good teachers. This is the work that was cited by President Barack Obama in his State of the Union address in 2012. It's very rare for a president to cite this kind of an academic work. In the short run, many things cause economic growth to go up and down. But in the long run, there may be nothing more important for a nation than science and all forms of creativity. The Infosys Prize and the impetus this is giving may have a more lasting mark on India's future than many other things that we do. This year's prize winner for the social sciences embodies that spirit of science and creativity. Congratulations, Raj. Thank you so much, Professor Basu. I'm really honored to be awarded the Infosys Prize and join the eminent list of winners today and over the past several years. I've been surrounded by science since I was born. I'm actually the last person to publish a paper in my own family. The heroes my sisters and I would hear uh, about while we were growing up regularly at home on the ISI Delhi campus from my parents who are listening today included Professor Varadhan, who we just heard from, Professor C.R. Rao, who I think is also on the line at age 100, and many others who are here today. The experience of being exposed to science from a young age played, played a huge role in shaping my own interest in pursuing science. My own research bears out this observation with much more data. Studying the lives of 1 million patent holders in the United States from birth to adulthood, we find that kids who grow up near scientists are much more likely to become inventors themselves, especially if they have similar backgrounds. For example, women are much more likely to become inventors in a particular field when they grow up near female inventors working in that field, but not if they grow up near male inventors working in that field. The next generation of kids needs to see scientists who look like them in order to become inventors and pursue science themselves. My own work, as Professor Basu noted, has focused primarily on the US, but I've always hoped that it will spark similar applications in India. India has a limitless pool of talent that I think has the potential to transform the world. Thank you to Narayan Murthy and the Infosys Foundation for helping spark that next generation's interest and imagination through these awards. To my family and particularly my wife Sundari for their inspiration and support and to all of you for this wonderful recognition. Thank you so much. Congratulations, Dr. Chetty. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pai. Thank you, Professor Basu. And congratulations, uh, Professor Chetty. Uh, you know, when I heard Professor Basu talking about insights from, from all that amount of data, I was reminded of what the Hungarian Nobel laureate, Albert St. Georgi, said. He said, Research is about seeing what everybody else sees, but thinking what nobody else thought. Well, that was our last category for today. And uh, I want to send out my warmest congratulations from all of us here at the Infosys Science Foundation to our winners of the six categories today. Uh, we wish them the very best in their futures, and we hope that they will add more and more accolades onto these accomplishments. And now, I'm very delighted to introduce CEO of Infosys, Salil Parekh,
for the closing remarks and a vote of thanks. Over to you. Thank you, Deepak. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon to each of you joining us for this fantastic event showcasing incredible talent and enormous contribution to the world. This has been a year of possibility from my perspective. We have been forced to pause and reflect and we have regrouped, course corrected and adapted. While listening to the jury chairs explain the work of the recipients of the Infosys Prize 2020, I felt tremendous hope for our future. Their work is helping us explore, understand and better our lives. A huge thanks to each of you. Our chief guest, Professor Srinivasa Vardhan, has been associated with the Infosys Science Foundation since its inception. As Mr. Murthy said in his speech, you have set the standards very high for this prize, choosing outstanding recipients during your tenure as chair. You wear your distinction with great humility, and we are honored that you took the time, not just this evening, but over the past 12 years to guide us. We look forward to our continued association. The caliber of a prize is determined by the caliber of its recipients. A heartfelt thanks to the distinguished jury chairs for choosing individuals who are truly exceptional. You have chosen excellent colleagues to help you with this task. Thank you to those jury members who have joined us from across the globe. Your dedication over the course of this year has borne excellent results. The government of India has been extremely far-sighted in making the prize money for the Infosys Prize tax-free in India. This is an investment for the future of our country. I would like to thank the trustees of the Infosys Science Foundation. Your vision has made this institution and the prize a reality. With each passing year, we see the foundation continuing to fulfill its purpose and showcasing the best research in the world. Infosys is proud to support the Infosys Science Foundation. And thank you to the team of the Infosys Science Foundation, Bhavna Mehra, Gurpreet Walia, Nidhi Varma, Swati Devankar, Ajay Isaac, and Hana Abraham, who, with the help of a few stalwarts, such as our own MC Deepak Pariki, put together not just this evening, but the whole year of work behind the prize. And finally, a huge thank you to all of you for joining us virtually to add warmth to our celebration of the Infosys Prize recipients and what they make possible. I look forward to seeing all of you in person next week. Thank you and stay safe. Thank you, Salil. Indeed. This event is a culmination of many, many months of effort of all of our team members at the Infosys Science Foundation and the juries around the world. And this year was especially challenging. But then as the late Dr. Abdul Kalam, the former president of India and a chief guest at one of our earlier events said, when we tackle obstacles, we find reserves of courage and resilience within us that we did not know that we had. And once we find them, we can move on with our lives. And so, with the light at the end of the COVID tunnel starting to appear, I sign off now with the hope that we will all meet in person at next year's event. Thank you for spending this time with us as we quest, this quest goes on 
for finding path-breaking research. Stay safe and stay curious.